Do you know him? I've heard of him, but that's it. We know who Robert Hart is. There's so much to learn about him. Let's go back to the classroom and we can start there. First being that he was born in Portadown. He went to Queen's University and finished top of his class. He was really good at learning languages. He was so good at his job that the Chinese government offered him a job as. Does anyone know? Oh, I know. He, he was the Inspector General of China's Imperial Maritimes Customs Service. We know that this was a very important job because it had such a long title. He was in charge of nearly 20,000 people. But what did he actually do in China? Well, he created the Chinese Postal Service. He created the first lighthouses in China. He constructed railways in China. He founded the Chinese Navy. He started the Chinese weather forecast. And he even created China's first brass band. During his lifetime, he was one of the most famous people in the world. There is even statues built of him. Would you like to know more about Robert Hart? Well, follow us and we'll take you on a fact-finding journey to uncover who was this legendary man from Portadown. Come on, follow me. So firstly, did you know that Robert Hart was the son of Henry Hart and Alan Edgar? Henry and Anne married in John Cray Old Church in 1834. Robert Hart was the first of 12 children. Our next stop on our fact-finding mission is here on Woodhouse Street. What's so special about this street? According to a biography written by Sir Robert Hart's niece, Juliet Braden, it states that he was born on the 20th of February, 1835. In a little white house with green shutters on Dungannon Street. Dungannon Street? Then why are we here in Woodhouse Street? Well, that's what it's called today. The house belonged to Robert Hart's grand to James Hart, who also ran a wide and spirit grocery shop from it. The fact which commemorated Robert Hart's birth in the house was attached to the house. The house was demolished in 1968 to make way for McGon Buildings car park. The plaque was removed and is now pride of place in our school entrance. We are so excited to meet Hugh Quinn as his family bought the Hart house and shop in the 1940s. Hugh Quinn remembers living in the building as a child. It was a very, it was a wonderful time. Of course I was a child and life was always very nice when you're a child. It gets complicated as you get older. But it was a lovely, it was a nice house to live in, a very old house. A little bit creepy at times, you know, it was so large and old. Allegedly said to be haunted. I don't know if it was or not. But when I used to go to bed at night, I didn't really want to get up to go to the bathroom at night and pass that room. It was, um, but I heard that there was quite a few told me it was a haunted room, it was a ghost, so I never did see it, I'm glad to say. Were you sad when the house was demolished? Yes, I felt, uh, I did, I felt a little bit down about that, but uh, I thought it was a little bit of history that had been, uh, had been destroyed, but that's what happens sometimes in, in life for progress and, and that's, that's how it is. But I noticed the plaque on their school wall as I came in and the last time I saw that plaque was 60 years ago and that's a long time and I didn't think I'd ever see it again. So it was nice to see it one more time. It used to hang in part of the building that I lived in. And I, I saw it practically every day until I was about 10, 10 years old. However, not everyone believes that Sir Robert Hart was born in the little house with green shutters in Dungannon Street. Although some people like Tommy Glenny believe that he was born in Milltown, just outside Port it on. Where is Milltown? Well Shannon, that's a very interesting question because 
Across Northern Ireland, there's a terrible lot of mill towns. Mill town was a name that just associated with a little mill. There was a lot of mills that scotched flax, made corn, did different things. But the mill town you're thinking about is the one that Robert Hart was associated with. And that mill town is seven miles out of Portadown as you go to Loch Ney, and it's on the very shores of Loch Ney at the little village called Milltown. Why do you think Robert Hart was born here? At the time, Robert Hart and his wife were living in the mill house at Milltown. Robert Hart's father, rather, was the manager. And he was born in the house, the manager's house beside the mill. A lot of the very old people who lived there, and some of them were able to say that on the day that Robert Hart was born, his father gave all the mill workers a half holiday and they all remember that half holiday from the day that Robert Hart was born in the mill house. So where was Robert Hart born? We'll leave that up to you to decide. What we do know is that in his early years Robert and his family lived in Milltown and Portadown. Robert Hart was baptised at St Mark's Church in 1835. However, it wasn't called St Mark's then. Do you know what it is called? It was called St Martin's Church and it looked different than the church here today. The tower was a lot smaller. Inside the church is the font that Sir Robert Hart was baptised in. And look what else we've spotted. A memorial stone to Dr Alexander Braden, the Hart family doctor. We'll come back to that name later. Stop is the Methodist Church here in Thomas Street. The Hearts were a very strong Methodist family. At dinner time, Henry Hart would ask his son Robert, what have you been doing for God today? In Portadown they attended this church in Thomas Street and it was built in 1832. One interesting fact that we found about this Methodist Church is that there was a large schoolroom located in the basement. Beside this church is the house that the minister would have lived in. The church building was sold after the new Thomas Street Church was built in 1860. Today the building is abandoned and we in for use again. I wonder what we could use it for. Toymaster here on High Street is one of our most favourite shops. But however, it wasn't always a toy shop. Can you guess what it was? Nope. It used to be the Mandible Arms Hotel. Sir Robert Hart's mother, Anne, and her brother, Richard, both worked and owned the hotel. Legend has it it was the best hotel in Portadown. The hotel used to be a post office and a taxi service. The hotel was later named the Imperial Hotel, then it became a supermarket, then it became a post office, and now it is Toymaster. Another interesting fact about Sir Robert Hart is that his father, Henry, owned a distillery in Milltown. Sadly, it burned down in 1839 and he had to find work in a, another distillery near Lisburn. When Henry got a new job, the family moved from Portadown to Ravernet House near Lisburn. Robert Hart left Ireland for China in 1854 and he lived there for over 50 years. Robert Hart did return to Portadown in 1866 while on holiday from China and visited the Balmataggar House, the home of Dr. Alexander Breeden, who just died. Here Robert fell in love with one of Alexander's daughters, Hesse. He asked her to marry him and she agreed. They got married in Dublin on the 22nd of August 1866. Soon they left for China and they would have three children together. The Breeden family left Ballantegger House in 1902. Today the house is home of the Armagh Cider Company. The fields are planted with famous Armagh Bramley apple trees. It would be over 40 years before Robert would return to Ireland again, but he never forgot his homeland. While in China he bought land which his family had once owned. The land was in a place called Kilimore and which is not too far from our school. Robert Hart left China for the final time in 1908. 
After China, he travelled through England and Ireland. Sadly, he died on the 20th of September 1911. He died in Great Marlow, England, and he was at the age of 76. According to local tradition, Sir Robert Hart was buried in this field near our school. But, but we, we know this is, is not true. true. So Robert Hart was buried in a town called Bersham in England. Although Sir Robert Hart was not buried in Poirier Down, his name still lives through our school, Sir Robert Hart Memorial Primary School. School officially opened on the 19th of June 1936, 25 years after Sir Robert Hart's death. This plaque and the portrait of Sir Robert Hart was unveiled on the day of the school's opening. Back then, there were 600 pupils in our school and a mind-blowing 60 pupils per class. Nowadays, there is 400 pupils in our school and 30 pupils per class. But why was our school called Sir Robert Hart? I know. To inspire us to follow in Sir Robert Hart's example. Just like Sir Robert Hart, we can grow up to be whatever we want to be. I know what I want to be. I want to be a vet. I want to be a baker. And I want to be a photographer. Well, I want to be an author. I want to be a youth worker. Oh, before we go, did you know that the logo of our school is a deer? Yes, I actually read it last week. That's because Hart is an old name for a male deer. There are many traces of Sir Robert Hart all over Portadown. Like in Hartfield Square and Hartfield Avenue. So that's the end of our fact finding tour and we learned so much about Robert Hart and I hope you did too. Thanks for watching.